Set up behind me here are the dual swags from 23.0. There's three in the range. They're really livable, really easy to set up and pack away. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's get started. Hit it. Ben from Snow is here, guys. We're showing you how to set up and pack away the 23.0 dual range of swags. So they're really livable and easy to pitch swag. There's three sizes, the 900, the 1100, and the 1400. When you get them, uh, when they're packed up, they look a little like this. This is the 900 in front of me here, uh, about 90 centimeters in length and about 40 to 45 centimeters in diameter, depending on how tightly you roll it up. The 1100 is 11, uh, 110 centimeters in length and the 1400, about 140 centimeters in length, all sharing the same diameter. And weight wise, around about eight kilos or just under eight kilos for the 900 through to about 17 kilos for the double over here. Let's get started setting it up. Firstly, I'll show you what comes in the bag. Now inside the box, when you buy your swag, all of these components actually come separate and you kind of got to assemble it a little bit. I'll put a few things together here for you today. Now, this is the spreader pole that goes across the middle of the tent. Two hoop poles to create the hoops on the end. A little bag of pegs in a uh, nice big canvas bag. Now, this is the bag, the carry bag that you get. Now, it's a really good quality carry bag. Big grab handles on the end, shoulder straps over the top, and the zip goes right down to the side so the bag actually lays flat to get the swag in and out of. So, it is a really good quality carry bag made of the same canvas that the swag's made of. This is the swag here, so the outer with the mat rolled up inside of it. Now, the mat that I've got in here has been unpacked for a while, but when you buy your swag, the mat comes rolled up like this, compressed really tightly. Now, when you take this out, it's gonna look pretty ugly. It's not gonna look very puffed up at all. And it actually says on the side here to leave it out for about 12 hours in direct sunlight even to try and speed up the process of having it puffed out. For the purpose of today's um, demonstration though, I've got the actual mat in here so that you get a good idea on what it's gonna pack up like. Now to get started, the first thing we do is remove the straps. Now these straps are attached to the swag here. We undo those and roll the swag out. So that first, it's pretty easy. The swag's rolled out. Now we could go and put pegs in each corner if you like, but it is a freestanding swag. We don't need to do that unless the weather's really bad. I'm just gonna use two pegs for each end, the awning of each end. But you do get six pegs with your swag, so you can peg it down if you like. Now the next step is to grab each of these poles and assemble them. They're three section poles and they're pre-bent, so they do already have a curve to them. We put them together. Now there is a really important step in the interest of making sure you don't break these poles in how you put them in the end of the swag. So quite often uh, we'll have people that have broken the pole at this join here. Uh, and that's simply because we're putting strain or too much strain on one point of the pole. So follow these steps, you won't have any problems. First thing you wanna do is find the sleeve at the top here. We feed the pole through this sleeve above the eyelet here. So the pole is running above this eyelet here and push that through to the middle of the pole here. From here, reach across and grab the pin in the corner here and put one pin in place. As you do this, don't force the pole too much. Don't create too much bending. Now you'll notice when I've done that, that I've now got a short section of pole here before the sleeve and a long section at this end to, the, to this point here. Now this is where people often find they'll break their poles. They'll bend this point down to put this pin in place and end up with a big bend here right across this join. And that's a point where it can be a failure. What we need to do is pull this sleeve across so it sits in the middle of the pole as close as we can to the middle before we bend this end down and put this pin in place. Now what that does is distribute the stress on the pole evenly on this side. This sleeves here stops it from peaking too much in the middle and then we've got an even distribution here as well. Now as we can then put the clips on. As we do it, make sure we don't push the pole out to one side. Better still, clip one side, then the other, then back to the other side, back and forward so that this pole stays nice and central. If you follow these steps, you won't have any problems with these poles. If you force it and have a big bend on one point of the pole, you can end up with a breakage. Now we've just done the same thing with the loop at the other end of the swag here. Once again, being careful not to, but to keep the pole nice and central so the weight's evenly distributed. Now we've got the hoops in the end. The next step is to grab our ridge pole and we put that in place in these eyelets here. So let's go grab that one, we'll show you. Now this is joined, this ridge pole, we bend it. There's a spring in the middle there to put it together. And then we release this buckle, which allows us to extend it out. At each end, there's a spigot. And these spigots 
go into the eyelets at the top of each hoop here. So we put that one in one end, hold that up, bend the other end up and put that in place as well. Once we've got them in place, we can stretch this out to tighten up the center of the pole, give it a good firm pull, clip this down and that will then lock that in place to give it its freestanding feature. There's a couple of C-clips on the end here, clip over the pole and we're almost set up. Last thing we want to do, the last thing I'm going to do today is put a peg in the grip at the awning at each end. So we've just got a grip like this, the same at the other end of the, of the, the swag here, it just gives us a bit of protection over this doorway here. You don't have to peg them out, it gives reasonable protection even if that's just sitting loose. If we do peg it out, it creates a little bit more rigidity across the length of the tent and also creates a bit more ventilation up underneath here. So one peg at each end and we're all done. Now that's the swag pretty much set up. Just pull the corners out, make sure they're not caught up in any of the, the dirt. And obviously I've got my mat inside here now, but if you're setting it up from new, you'd need to throw your mat in there. From there on in, you can leave your mat in when you pack it up. There's one other thing you can do for setup. Now you'd need some extra awning poles, short awning poles to do this, optional awning poles. And that's to pitch this door out as an awning. Now you could, you could do it on both sides, so you would need four awning poles in total. There's little eyelets on each corner here. You can actually pitch this out with two extra awning poles and a couple of guy ropes to create a little sheltered awning just outside your swag here. Apart from that, that's how to set up the 23-0 dual range of swags. The process is the same for the 1100 and the 1400. They're just a little bit wider. Pack up, just as easy. First thing, take the pegs out of the uh, guy ropes at the ends, poles out, and then we roll it up. Now, when we take these hoop poles out the end here, we want to apply the same logic we did when we set them up so that we're not creating too much stress on one side of the pole than the other. So what I'm gonna do is sort of keep hold of the pole at the top here, unclip the sides and make sure it doesn't sort of, this doesn't slide to one side and create a big hoop on one side just to keep that stress even so we don't damage the pole. Now I'm going to roll the poles up inside the swag here, but we do need to have some consideration with this. If we're going to use the swag to sit on, then you're probably best leaving the poles out because you don't want to bend these while they're inside the swag. If you're just uh, rolling it up and putting it inside the back of your vehicle, it should be fine because they're reasonably well protected, wrapped up inside the mat here. But just have a little bit of consideration about how these sit inside the swag how you're tying it down so you don't damage those poles in transit. Now I'm rolling from the end that hasn't got the straps up towards the attached straps so we can wrap them around afterwards. Now the design of this bag makes it easy to get your swag in without even having to lift it up because you can roll this end out here, roll the swag over on top of the bag, pull the sides up and then this just wraps up over the top. Well that went back in the bag pretty easily. Probably the best bit of advice I can give you is to make sure as you roll it you pull the fabric and doors in on the side so they stay contained within the width of the mat because it's the, the length here that's probably the hardest thing to squeeze in diameter wise it's nice and easy but that is how you set up and pack away the 23-0 dual swag same process for all the three sizes it was nice and easy all by myself you can grab these online at snowies.com.au at our lowest prices every day. If you like that video, subscribe to our channel. We'll send you all the latest and greatest information. Got any questions, let us know down in the comments below or check out some of our other 23-0 videos like this one down here.